Welcome again friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the life cycle of uh, HSV or which is called herpes simplex virus. So let me talk about uh, the herpes simplex virus and majorly we'll be talking about the life cycle of this herpes simplex virus. Okay, so let's begin with it. Now herpes simplex virus is having a double stranded DNA as its genetic material. So if I draw the structure, not exact structure, because I won't encourage you to memorize exact protein names of viruses because they are very much uh, complicated. But uh, in, in a sense, I can draw it in, in such a way. Let's say, let's say this is the virus that I'm going to draw. Let's say this is the capsid protein of our virus. And surrounding this capsid protein, there will be envelope. We all know that this is the envelope. Now the envelope of this virus will contain certain amount of spike proteins that are required for the host cell attachment. So these are those spike proteins that are coming out. These are glycosylated molecules uh, that are formed outside. And in between this uh, capsid protein and this envelope and also in between this capsid and the genetic material. I uh, forgot to draw the genetic material. So the genetic material here is double stranded. DNA. So let me build it. So this is double stranded DNA as the genetic material. And there are certain molecules inside those molecules. Let me change it. Those molecules, this blue color molecule, these are called the tegument protein, which actually hold this capsid proteins together. It holds the capsid proteins together with, with the envelope protein regions like that. Okay. These are the tegument proteins. I shouldn't have drawn the tegument inside because the tegument actually present between the capsid and the uh, envelope proteins. Okay, so it's n it should be the outside, not the inside ones. Okay, so if I draw, if I mark them properly, what will be the names in this case? This this is the envelope. You all know envelope. Uh, this is the capsid, and these are tegument protein and there is an important role of tegument protein during the life cycle of HSV. We are going to see that and this is the DNA that we all know. It's a double stranded DNA. DS DNA. So in a sense HSV is a double stranded enveloped virus. Okay. So let's begin now. Now once this virus reaches the target cell there are receptor interaction between this virus uh, protein molecules uh, in the coat with the host cell receptor. So let me draw it. So if I draw the host cell here, this is the host cell. Inside this host cell, there are receptor molecules coming out like that. And these virions can attach with these host cells via the outer receptor. So these are, say, the virus molecules. Uh, not virus particles not molecules now these virus particles are projecting those interacting molecules here so due to this interaction these virus molecules will be internalized okay and during this interaction this virus molecule kind of fuses with this host cell membrane so as they are fusing with the host membrane remind you in all of this all of this material there are capsid and genetic material so i haven't drawn it yet so let's say these are Okay, now once they are fused, so after the fusion, so if I draw the fusion properly, it will look something like that. It will look like this. And due to this fusion, there will be a release of, so let me just erase this part. Yeah, and there will be release of this virion capsid into the cytoplasm that's the important point and remind you in all of this case there are blue color remember the tegument proteins present between this envelope and capsid region this free space so tegument proteins also start to release onto the cytoplasm so now in the cytoplasm what we are having we are having the tegument protein and also we are having the virus capsid right so capsid with tegument proteins are released inside the cytoplasm. Now once they are released inside the cytoplasm, 
then this cap seed will be migrated from the cytoplasm towards the nucleus and that's a very 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 important stage so let me draw the nucleus here so let's say let's say in this case draw the nucleus here let me draw it here so it fuses and then it migrates towards the nucleus and this is the nuclear membrane for example these are the nuclear membrane and this is the nuclear pore for example let's say this is the nuclear membrane and pore so they are engulfed inside so here this is the nucleus of the cell so let me write n for nucleus now this capsid will migrate the capsid will migrate through the it will migrate through microtubule system remember microtubules and they will reach the nucleus through the nuclear pore they will deliver their capsid materials which is the double stranded dna inside the nucleus and that's a very very important stage but before that once we know two important things are released here one is tegument protein another one is capsid now this from this tegument proteins there are major many different varieties of protein present but majorly two important proteins are there which are having a important function in the life cycle one of this protein is so let me write one of this kind of protein is vhs or it is called virion host shut off virion host shut off and also another protein which is termed as vp 16 these two protein play a vital role in this hsv life cycle now this virion host shut off protein as we know the name suggesting us all it will shut off the transcription machinery of host cell that means uh, and also it will block the translation of host mrnas so that's the important part right it will go and degrade the host mrnas which are present in the cytoplasm so if i draw if i draw these are let's say these are the host host mrna host cell mrna now this vhs molecules will go and they will degrade this host mrnas that's the job of vhs on the other hand this vp16 molecules are playing another role this vp16 if i draw vp16 here in this color this vp16 which are also present there in tegument now this vp16 will pass through this uh, nuclear pore inside the nucleus and it will help the viral replication and viral transcription not actually replication but viral transcription at the very basic level it helps in transcribing some early genes required for the development of progeny viruses and required for the replication of the virus right so it it will move inside so vp16 now is inside and along with that we remember we know that there are uh, the host cell genome is present there this is the host cell genome uh, inside the nucleus and also we know that uh, the this bacteria this viral dna is also getting inserted inside this so this is the viral dna for example now using this viral dna and this vp16 will deliver or will generate some early some immediate early genes so they will induce some immediate early genes now this immediate early gene products are required for the lytic cycle and also they are required for the replication of this viral genome right so some of this in immediate early gene will be uh, so this mrna immediate early mrnas which are prepared in nucleus will be migrated outside into the cytoplasm and once they are inside the cytoplasm those immediate early genes will be converted into immediate early proteins now some of this immediate early proteins will be then taken inside the nucleus again and those immediate early proteins will help to duplicate the dna now viral phage will duplicate its dna so dna duplication that is a replication will be done there right after the replication is done there are several varieties of transcription will go on and early genes will start to produce so early genes and the late genes start to produce now some of those late genes coming from this uh, viral dna 
are required for synthesizing the capsid materials. Remember those tegument proteins and capsid proteins and membrane proteins and they will produce those kind of late proteins. And this is the stage they need to determine where they are going to either create the lytic infection or the lysogenic infection because this HSV or herpes simplex virus can cause both of them. Now the first case when they produce this immediate early genes if these genes are if this virus determined to stay here for long period of time or if it determines to cause a light light, uh, light sorry lysogenic phase or latent phase of the infection uh, they start to increase or synthesize some other gene products and those genes are termed as lat genes those are termed as lat genes or latent genes so latent gene expression will be done if latent gene expression is mediated then they will be in the lysogenic phase but if this is not latent gene expression if it is only the immediate early genes and early gene expression then they are going to transfer through the lytic phase of their cycle so that is a determinants between the lytic phase and the latent phase of this HSV virus so once uh, they reach this particular point here we are only looking at the lytic phase of the cycle so they produce the immediate early genes then again internalize inside then they produce early genes early genes are responsible for the DNA replication then they produce the late genes which are responsible for the production of structural protein so finally late gene expression will be there so let me write the expression here late gene late genes or late mRNAs now they will be taken late mRNAs will be converted into late proteins or structural proteins so these are structural proteins remind you now once every pro everything is made here structural proteins and the DNAs which is required as the genetic material is produced then what they will do they will produce a virion inside this nucleus so the assembly of all structural proteins handling with this double stranded DNA as the genetic material in the middle occurs inside the nucleus once everything is done inside the nucleus then they bulge out from the nucleus taking a section of the nuclear membrane with it then what will what will they do so let me let me see here in this is the process uh, let me zoom into it a little bit so inside the nucleus we are there and now inside the nucleus we made our viruses we made we actually made our capsid and inside the capsid we are having our important genetic material everything is produced now once it is produced they will bulge out from this nucleus taking a nuclear so so they will bulge out so let me draw like that and then finally they come out with a nuclear membrane surrounding it okay and inside there is there is the capsid protein now once it is coming out like that from the nucleus a reminder this is the nucleus okay it is bulging out then what it will do it will move towards the endoplasmic reticulum because during this process endo inside the endoplasmic reticulum there are certain type of receptors and protein molecules are produced and those protein molecules that are present produced in ER because we know that the whole system organizes in such a way that if this is the nucleus so let me draw it another way so if this is the nucleus uh, endoplasmic reticulum should be here presented like this these are the ER and then we are having the Golgi apparatus remind you the Golgi apparatus will be there right so Golgi apparatus and then finally the cell membrane and this is the actual organization right so from the nucleus so let me write the names nucleus this is this is endoplasmic reticulum this is the Golgi Golgi apparatus and this is the membrane right so once they are bulged out so where we are we are at this particular point we are at this particular point with our virus particle inside this vesicle we are having our virus right we are having our virus capsid right so now it will move and we know this inside this ER there are proteins made so proteins are synthesized proteins are synthesized in different regions of this ER like this so once these proteins are synthesized this 
this particular vesicle will fuse with this ER and after the fusion with this ER it will migrate inside and then when it is coming out of the ER it is taking some of this protein component some of this uh, some of this receptor components or spike like protein components with it so now now what how they look like they will look something like this this is a membrane and outside they are, uh, they are having some ki certain kind of uh, spike like things and then inside they are having their capsid and obviously they are having all those tegument proteins inside right? this is another truth so that's that's the virus will look like now so then after coming out from ER they will fuse with Golgi apparatus and inside the Golgi apparatus those protein molecules that are newly added in the in the envelope of this virus will be glycosylated will be modified after the modification is done properly and everything is fine it is ready to go and through the Golgi it will leave and it will leave by taking a by, by taking a portion of this membrane with it and then finally what we get we get our desired we get our desired virus fudge particle not actually our desired because we never desired to get a virus particle it is desired by those viruses so this is the particle and there will be many more tegument proteins inside like that and this this is the mature and complete herpes simplex virus okay so herpes simplex can uh, there are two different types of herpes simplex virus actually HSV type 1 HSV type 2 HSV type 1 causes common type of cold and those kind of infections on the other hand HSV type 2 usually causes a genital herpes now among this HSV type 1 this is a latent infection and obviously this is a lytic infection and we have seen how lytic infection is properly done and for the latent infection I, I remind you uh, that I have told you always that uh, they produce this expression of lat genes and then they will be, they will be dormant for several periods of time but when they, the, the condition uh, will be on their favor for example when the condition is turned around like the temperature changes or UV radiation or stress response is there and these particles will bust the cell out and they will come out from the host cell after the latent period or latency period so this is the overall process of HSV infection and HSV life cycle and I hope that's helpful Thank you.